No, they don't, Diane. I know what our basket looks like. And this is our basket. And this is our towel. And this is our pillowcase. And this is our... <laughs> laundry day, huh? You now, for a buck, I hope you fold your clothes. Delicate under things I do for free. Get me out of here, Ruthie. Woo! Wow, is this yours, Ruthie? <laughs> Yes, I'm planning for the future. Oh, boy, are you an optimist. What do you do with this? You and Diane both wear it at the same time? Hey, kids, celebration time. Champagne for everybody. I got a raise. Great, Dad. Terrific. Now I can get my car. And then we can buy a boat. I'm going to go shopping for the boat in my car. And you can drop me off at the poorhouse on the way. I, I mean, kids, it, it wasn't that big a raise. Uh, but I'll be back in a minute, Dad. I got to return this laundry. Ruthie got the wrong basket. I'll do it. Hey, kids, I got a great idea. Get changed and we'll go out to celebrate. Oh, gee, Dad, I'm babysitting tonight. You know, I sort of promised Hal I'd go out to the movies with him. Hot breath, Hal. <laughs> Diane, you warn him, when you get home, I'm going to dust you for fingerprints. <laughs> Listen, Dad, we don't have to go. Yeah, Dad, we could always stay here and help you figure out how you're going to spend all that extra money. <laughs> I got it figured out. I'm going to blow it on rent and food. <laughs> you guys go ahead with your plans. We'll celebrate tomorrow, okay, Dad? And congratulations. We're real proud of you. I got to get dressed. Uh, by the way, did you kids make dinner? Uh, boy, Dad, what do you think? You got a couple thoughtless daughters? <laughs> we made you a pot roast. A pot roast? Hey, great. <laughs> I guess it's still frozen. Uh, tell you, I'll just shove a stick in it and eat it like a popsicle. <laughs> oh, hi, Morgan. Hi, Larry. Hey, terrific, Dad. Now you got somebody your own age. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, no, Morgan. I didn't mean that you were old and wrinkled. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Come on in. I got a bottle of champagne. We'll celebrate. Hey, Larry Barton just called. He wants me to get right down to the station. Do you know what he wants? He probably wants to tell you I got a raise. Oh, that's terrific. I'd be more thrilled if it had been me. <laughs> you're beautiful when you're selfish. <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. It's just that I've been at that station for a year and a half, and I'm still making the same salary. Well, then go ask old man Barton for more money. Nah, I can't start making demands. I've only been out of the secretarial pool for two years. Well... Wait a minute. You were in the top of your class at broadcasting school, and, and you've been producing my show for a year and a half. Here's what you do. When you get down to see old man Barton, put on some sexy perfume and wear that low-cut dress. <laughs> Mr. Barton is 72 years old. So if it doesn't kill him, you'll get your raise. <laughs> no, you've done a great job, Morgan. You, you, uh, you deserve some recognition. Oh, thank you, Larry. You know, that really means a lot to me. Morgan? What? 
Hey, as long as you're wearing the uh, low-cut dress, why don't you hurry back here and help me celebrate? <laughs> oh? Well, sure. I've got a bottle of champagne. We'll be alone. I'll keep the bottle cold. And the body warm. <laughs> Do you uh, always get romantic after a raise? Always. How much did you get? Another 50 a week. Oh, I can't wait till you get 100. <laughs> va, 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 boom. I hope Mr. Barton feels that way. <laughs> Girls, when are you leaving? before Morgan gets here. Oh, unless you want us to stay. If you girls get back before you're 30 years old, you're both in big trouble. <laughs> Boy, Diane, I've never seen Dad all excited like this. Well, it's his first date in a long time. Remember what you tell us before we go out with the opposite sex, Dad? If you let somebody take advantage of you on the first date, they'll never respect you. <laughs> and don't forget, your reputation means more than a good time. And it's better to say no and be unpopular than regret it for the rest of your life. Well, it's easy for you to say, but all the other guys do it. <laughs> oh, that's how. Dad, when we come home tonight, we'll make lots of noise and we'll mess around with the lock and that way it'll give you plenty of time to act innocent. Goodbye, girls. Hey, what are you doing, Larry? He's throwing his kids out. Not a moment too soon. Bye, Morgan. Bye, Dad. Bye. Come in. Thank you. Well, I've got champagne to tickle your nose. And uh, I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> Promises. Uh, do you uh, notice anything different? Sure. You're five months pregnant. Ah, uh, bite your tongue. <laughs> Didn't know that prevented it. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, Larry, in case you didn't notice, this is the first time in the history of the world that you and I have been in this apartment alone. I almost feel like I'm cheating on somebody. Hold that thought. <laughs> hey, Larry, I have some wonderful news. Yeah, so do I. The girls won't be back until they're 30 years old. <laughs> you got the race. Well, not only that, but I'm going to have even more responsibility. Hey, that's great. Morgan, Morgan, do you realize that this is the first date date that we've been on since the Northwest Cattle and Bull exhibit? <laughs> Only this is even better. We don't have to dance in the sawdust. <laughs> Larry, thank you for giving me the courage to talk to Barton. Boy, if it hadn't been for you, nothing would have happened. Well, that was nice. I have to do that again sometime. <laughs> like now. Why haven't we done that before? Good question. <laughs> um, Larry, before we start mixing chemicals, I want to tell you something. Uh, Morgan, let's not talk. I leave for the front in the morning. <laughs> Larry, I just want to tell you about my new responsibilities. Uh, new rule, okay? Uh, no business talk tonight. Tonight, we make up for lost time. You know, you have got the whitest arms I ever saw. And uh, you just happen to like them? White stands for surrender. It could also stand for purity. Well, I never judge a person by the color of their skin. Wise man. I guess I guess in a way I've been waiting for this for a long time Well, I hope it was worth the wait Well, it was certainly a very nice start Larry, I, I have something to tell you And I, I hope it won't change anything between us Why should it? Well, I'm aware of how some stupid macho males react to this situation, but I don't think you're that silly. Larry, Barton made me program director. I am vice president in charge of programming. Oh, that's terrific. I'm proud of you. You don't mind? Mind? Why should I mind? I 
just thought you might feel kind of funny, you know, making love to your boss. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Larry, what's the matter? Why did you pull away? Well, I didn't pull away. You you pulled away. Oh, well, give me another kiss. That's my first order as your boss. Beats lighting the boss's cigar. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> Larry, what is it? Oh, come on. Does it actually bother you that I'm program director? <laughs> well, why should that bother me? Well, that wasn't much of a kiss. Well, I've never had any complaints before. Hey, uh... If you don't like it, why don't you take it up with the executive committee right after the paper cup problem? <laughs> this actually bugs you, doesn't it? Your masculinity is threatened. I can't believe this. My masculinity is intact. You want to arm wrestle two out of three. <laughs> Larry, you know, your first kiss was like a roaring ocean, and then I said the word boss, and the roaring ocean turned into the Dead Sea. <laughs> I'm sorry, there'll be other nights. Well... That's encouraging. Shall I leave, or do you want me to just wait in the bedroom? Who cares? Take a number. <laughs> Larry, listen. This isn't going to change anything. Just because I'm program director, it doesn't mean I'm going to suddenly start giving you orders. Well, I, I certainly appreciate that, Miss Winslow. Miss Winslow? Well, at the office, it'll be Mr. <laughs> ah. Now we're getting down to basics. You resent a woman making a few changes in your show. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, back up. What, 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 what changes? It's not important. We'll talk about it tomorrow. No, no, no. We'll talk about it now. There's nothing else going on. <laughs> Sad but true. Larry, I, I have a few improvements for your show. Oh, well, really? Well, what took you so long, Miss Winslow? I mean, you've been program director for almost uh, 30 seconds. Will you just listen to me for a minute? You'll be running your own show. You'll be your own producer reporting to me, of course. No way. Larry Alder is not reporting to anybody two years out of the secretarial pool. And you spent one year of that polishing your little toenails. I knew you'd come up with something like that. I deserve that job, Larry. I finished at the head of my broadcasting class, and you said so yourself. Sure, you graduated from a school that advertises on a book of matches <laughs> I've got this job on sheer merit No, you got that job because you walked into old man Barton's office with a dress cut down to your merits <laughs> I don't care what title they gave you You are not telling me what to do Well, hang on to your hat, pal Because here is your first order from me Go suck an egg. <laughs> then she said the roaring ocean changed into the Dead Sea. Tommy, you shouldn't listen outside people's doors. What happened next? <laughs> then they got into this giant fight about Morgan being program director, and then Morgan told him to go suck an egg. <laughs> No wonder Dad likes her. She's just like Mom was. <laughs> Cut it out, you guys. Dad and Morgan will probably make up, so don't spread it all over the whole building. And Tommy, no more listening at keyholes, understand? Yeah. Are you absolutely sure? Does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? <laughs> <laughs> if she had a keyhole, you'd be the first to know. <laughs> You know, Dad and Morgan shouldn't be fighting. Yeah, I know. Hey, Diane. Tonight we were going to have that congratulations dinner for Dad. Mm -hmm. Why don't we invite Morgan, too? Great. What are we having? <laughs> Not you, Tom. This is a private dinner, so they'll make up. And always used to work for Mom and Dad. Right, Diane? Well, except the last time when the lawyer came over and uh, blew out the candles. <laughs> Let's make something really great. Hey, I got an idea. You call Morgan, I'll clean up the house, and tell me we go to the market. Let's make lobster thermidor. What's that? It's about forty dollars better than a chili dog. <laughs> Lobster's great. And if Dad pinches Morgan under the table, we can blame it on the lobster. <laughs> Tonight? Oh, honey, are you sure that this is all right with your father? Well, okay, Diane, I'll be there. Thank you. Bye bye. Any more boxes for your new office, sacred boss lady? 
Earl, knock it off. I am your slave. I bow at your alabaster feet. I can't get up. I'm stuck. Earl, when you unstick yourself, you can take these two. Yes, Your Majesty. Your wish is my command. Right. Oh, hi, Earl. I'm the new box boy. I wonder what she has in mind for you. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Winslow. Uh, Larry, it was very nice of you to invite me. Invite you to what? To dinner. Diane just called and told... Oh, obviously you knew nothing about this. All right, fine. We can call it off. No. Hey, Morgan, sometimes kids are smarter than we are. I'm, I'm really sorry about this whole thing. <laughs> Oh, Larry, so am I. I really am. You want to kiss and make up? <laughs> Don't you ever knock? <laughs> Don't you love this? This is Meadowlark's new commercial for your show. Meadowlark's store has values to beat the band. Well, that's a relief. I thought the poor guy got run over by the Portland Symphony bus. <laughs> Listen to this, Larry. Meadow Lock Store. Morgan's galore. Fell from the floor. Don't play anymore. Morgan, there is no way that I am going to use this on my show. Oh, why not? Well, uh, for one thing, it has no class. The Blue Danube has no class? <laughs> Larry, this commercial is going to bring in business. You are a respected citizen in this community. Da, 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 honk, honk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you call that music? Nope, but when I hum all the way to the back, hey, that's me. <laughs> now, Larry, that's exactly what I've been saying. Look, just give it a try, okay? I, I mean, I know it's not Tchaikovsky, but it's, it's got, well, it's certainly, uh, you know, what's the word? Stinks. <laughs> Stinks. Well, I'm glad you agree with me. Oh, or uh, do you want me to say idiotic and stupid? No. No, let's just stay with stink, shall we? The eternal refuge of people who have no vocabulary. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I really am. Look, uh, just put it on at 3 o'clock, okay? No way, boss lady. Lady? All right, how about sister or honey or toots? You know what the problem is, Larry? Not that your friend became your boss, but that a woman friend became your boss. Like hell. Don't yell at me, Larry Alder. Why? Because you're a woman? I'll yell at you all I want. Look, no dame is going to give me orders just so she can tell the gals at the beauty parlor how she made boss lady of the year. If I weren't your friend, Larry, I would fire you. You're not my friend. You're my boss. Good. You're fired. Larry, I have a new arrangement. Listen to this. Metal lock store. <laughs> Metal lock Just serenade her, pal. I'm leaving. Was it something I played? <laughs> if you two turn out to be women when you grow up, you can just find yourself a new box. What happened? Morgan. She's even got a man's name. Well, there goes our fancy dinner. Oh, no, it doesn't. I burn my fingers to the bone for them, and the least they can do is eat it. I'll go get Morgan. You sit out the wine glasses. Um. Ah! Ruthie, uh, my question for the day. Why is there a lobster in my bathtub? Dad, that's Floyd. Oh, sorry, silly question. <laughs> Hello, Floyd. Nice to meet you. You see, Dad, uh, Diane and I, well, we were going to make you a lobster thermidor for your congratulations dinner. And so we sent Tommy down to the market <coughs> to get Floyd, and, uh, and he was alive. And, uh, and we were supposed to drop him into the boiling water. Oh, but he looked at us with those little eyes, and, 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 and so we couldn't do it. So, uh, so you're going to get cheese and macaroni thermidor instead, okay? That's great. Here she is. Now, Dad, Morgan was nice enough to come over here, so the least you could do is be nice to her. Yeah, Dad. Oh, boy, that's all I need. Two more women to give me orders. <laughs> okay, might as well sit down. Thank you. 
Larry, this is your friend, Morgan. Morgan, this is your friend, Larry. Okay, Ruthie, okay. Um, the girls have made us a congratulations dinner. That's why I'm here. They went to a lot of trouble. Yes, they did. <laughs> well, Dad, why don't you ask Morgan what kind of day she had? <laughs> How was your first day as boss? Just wonderful. I fought with my two best friends, and then I tangled with Jimmy down in the mailroom about nothing. And the five o'clock gourmet got mad at me because I told him he had to cut his program short by 30 seconds. He said if I cut his program short, he couldn't get his souffle to rise. <laughs> he, uh, he couldn't get his souffle to rise? <laughs> That's uh, kind of funny. <laughs> yes, sir. Look, Diane, we got him laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that that is pretty funny. <laughs> In fact, my whole day has been one big laugh after another. Oh, yeah. One big laugh. Um, Deb. What's the matter? Well, I'm going to cry. I hate this. Just when you need all your dignity. Hey, Morgan, I I'm sorry. No, uh... Don't sympathize, okay? Because if you do, it'll just turn into a tidal wave. Now you did it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. I have half a mind just to walk into Barton's office tomorrow and tell him I can't handle it. Hey, hey, now you do that and you are going to hear some real yelling. Now look, you're going to be great in that job. Just don't let some fathead like me scare you off. Yeah, Morgan. Don't ever listen to a fathead. <laughs> Ruthie, go feed Floyd. <laughs> look, uh, Morgan, don't tell me that you can't handle this job because you can. You know who can't handle it? Guys like me. Guys who don't have the guts to admit that they can't take orders from a woman who's qualified enough to give them. Okay. Okay. I was getting better kisses than that when you were mad at me. <laughs> uh, I've been thinking about those kisses, Larry. And, uh, well, we're going to be working together day after day. And we live in the same building. Uh, I'd like to wait. I mean, as much as I'd like to. Oh, Larry... I want to be able to uh, concentrate on my work. You know what I mean. Hey, Morgan. Go suck an egg. <laughs> no. I mean it, Larry. Okay. We'll try it for a while. Soup's on. Well, are you hungry, Morgan? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm starving. I, I always get hungry after a good cry. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, this dinner does not look too good, Dad. Oh, no. It looks like a swamp of noodles. <laughs> you couldn't kill Floyd. We sure don't want to kill you, Dad. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, Morgan. Now, here is what we are going to do. We're going to take Floyd down to the ocean and set him free. Terrific. Great. Okay, Morgan, you bring the wine, my dear. We shall buy some cheese on the way, and you and I will have ourselves a nice, pleasant, platonic evening at the beach. That sounds wonderful. Uh, Dad? Hmm? The beach is 70 miles from here. <laughs> ah, so it is. Ah, well, not to worry. Lloyd knows the way. <laughs> <laughs> 